Everyone's here? Okay, good. Welcome, everyone. So when they're telling me when they're ready for questions, they'll let you know. You just speak the question. There's no preface. There's no names. There's nothing. You just ask the question. I think everyone probably had at least one question. If not, you go go through the first round of questions, then you'll we'll see how far they go. I would never know how long they're going to be in for. Um, there's many times where I want to explain the process and who they are. And then there's other times where I feel that they do very well explaining who they are and what they are. And then sometimes they don't explain at all. And they will not. Add, they will not explain, because they feel it is not important for you to know where they live or what they do, or they they have another way of operating. And we've experienced them. You know, in the times that we've experienced them, we have felt them to be um, very open. At the same time, they're very clear about what they speak about, what they don't speak about, what is. We've gathered that it is that they feel that there's things that have to do with timing with where we are at. And that there's things that they tell us that this is the right time to tell us something and not the right time to tell us something. And I like to make the joke that, you know, if you're adopted and you don't know, your parents are always wondering when the right time is going to be to tell you. And they kind of know. You know, it's not going to be for a while before we tell this kid that they're adopted. Some parents tell them right off the very beginning. Who knows? So I feel that they, we are kind of in that position. But they do never come across that we are not as advanced as them. They never have that there. They speak to us where we are at. And they speak from where they, are, where they are at. So as the evening goes on, allow yourself just to feel and receive and understand that there's probably more than one individual talking. I always feel that there's more. Somehow it's like a, so hard to describe. <laughs> it's like a choir all speaking in the same notes. It's like... Um, and if you feel like you're not comfortable sitting where you are, sit on the floor. You can lay on the floor. It's not, there's no rules in that way, okay? Um, and that being said, I think that what we'll do is we'll start off with a little meditation. They're all ready here. You know, they call themselves the friends, mm -hmm. but they call, they are part of a, a group called the Echelon. And I think what I know in English is the word the echelon means the peak. But they don't mean that they are the peak. They mean they are always operating at the peak of knowledge and the peak of vibration. They make themselves exist there. It means that they are discovering always at the peak. If there was an arrow, they live on top of the point. As the arrow is flying, that's where they like to live. <laughs> That's what they mean by the echelon. It's the peak of something, the zenith of something. Let's close our eyes. As we close our eyes, everyone, we are submitting our request to the universe. It's a request that we may learn how to more comfortably, peacefully, easily remove obstacles, tensions, vibrations, remove abstractions from our mind and confusions and thoughts and so that we may relinquish those levels of resistance and be open vessels of receiving because there is nothing but abundance at all times. This whole room is full of abundance. Your whole body is full of abundance. 
it is a kind of abundance that you cannot even quantify. It is so endlessly massive, the source of what we are and become in the physical form and as we are consistently evolving in the spiritual form of our, which is our true self. So I ask you to take a deep breath in through your nose and hold the breath and do a ah. Very nice, all the way out. Let's breathe in slower, half the speed, slow. Slow, take your time, breathing in slow. Take all the time you need. Breathing in and now, quietly holding the breath, relaxing the forehead and the eyebrows, and gently exhaling through the mouth. <sighs> relaxing the shoulders, bowing the head forward. Surround yourself with the color of sapphire. A deep indigo blue with light inside. All around you, in fractals and crystals, in ripples of vibration, frequency, and light, all throughout your being, as beautiful as you can see it. All around you, multifaceted, cut with the most intricate jewel-like patterns. And now see that opening up into a vast universe where you are focused on a single point of light in the distance. It could look like it is a million light years away, but you are focused on that one star. Focus on that one star with your third eye. Your third eye becomes that star as it is focused on that star. Draw in your mind a point of light from your third eye to that very distant star. And relaxing your forehead, begin to feel your entire being and that star moving towards each other to become one. And breathe. Relax into your being. And they will be here shortly. I'm Z. 
all realities are agreed upon, all minds are one, all points are intersecting at this which is. We are known as the friends. Indeed, that is what we are. You search for creation. You see creation as the act of source which creates. From the source comes the creation. And in this understanding that you have agreed upon, perhaps is the root of some discontent. You venture to understand the nature of the universe in physical forms by the use of equations and formulas. The sum of the parts are equal to the parts. And so you see the separation of the numbers or the integers the values that you have set as numbers, as a way of navigating and understanding reality. You measure, therefore you are. You measure distance by time. You believe that your brethren in this physical universe are at a distance from you. You measure this distance by what you believe to be a speed. That speed is a measurement. You assign numbers to a speed based upon your agreement of time, simply put, if you were to travel at a certain speed, it is measured by the distance that would be covered traveling at that speed. You see these agreements as the foundation of how you navigate reality that you must travel at a certain speed to reach a certain point that is away from you. You see physical reality as a never-ending grid reaching out into what you deem as the vastness of space. And so your poets ponder where is the edge of the universe where does it end? And this becomes a conundrum for you because you believe that there must be an end as there must be a beginning. You measure your existence based upon this framework of time, the rotation of your planet and the elliptical orbit around your star. You have decided this is how you shall label time, seconds, minutes, years, centuries. And your physical existence is what you call a lifetime.
your physical ancestors in the agreement of linear time as you have decreed your reality to be simply put the fathers of your fathers and your fathers and your mothers those ancestors also measured their reality by the movement of the celestial bodies that when the sun rises and sets it shall be called a day When the body breathes and breathes no more, it shall be called a life. When consciousness, as you know it, is not displayed in the human body, you call that sleep. Your ancestors perhaps were more at one with the universe. Your ancestors lived in a physical reality devoid of pollution. They were able to see far beyond what you can see with your eyes now. They felt more at place in your solar system. Your physical reality is based upon the capacity to perceive where the physical body lacks in the ability to perceive. You have created technologies to enhance these perceptions to see that which is tinier than you can see and much larger than you can see for you cannot see the shape of your planet though you stand upon it what shall you do in the quest for the answers of your creation or your end. Is it enough to know what you are seeking, searching for throughout these lifetimes as you refer to them? You are existing simultaneously in many realities, you call them dimensions. The words serve a purpose. The words are not the thing. As the words represent the thing, You are displaying an inclination that is natural to use symbols, to communicate ideas. Your language is such a set of symbols. Your written word carries within it Instructions, they are codes to write the letters of your alphabet in a way that forms a word that you currently know is a code, a set of instructions that you then process through your physical brain and the processes 
of your understanding, which you refer to as your mind. The natural world that you live in, which is only yet perceived to a certain percentage by you consciously, unconsciously you are in deep connection to all realities. And even your consciousness you have now compartmentalized into your subconscious, your higher conscious, and so on. You live in a reality of definitions It is important to understand the foundational beliefs upon which you judge reality, if there is a beginning there must be an end, the reverse being true, in your physical form which you refer to as human beings. You see pain as a form of communication. The body that you have consciously created receives the stimulation of physical pain, signaling the programmed instructions to survive. All of your instincts your true instincts are far more glorious than simply survival. You are creators. You regard your efforts on earth, that which you build, design, intellectualize, are your small creations. While you struggle to accept that the larger experience of your reality is also created by you, this distresses you for you cannot remember clearly choosing this. And yet, your truth is that you are feeling. With every gust of wind, there is a feeling evoked within you. You sense the movement of the wind. And what the symbol and the frequencies of those sounds do for you and to you. That is a testament that you are pure consciousness. Could it be that you are the wind speaking to yourself? And that feeling that you feel when you hear the wind is the resonance of a memory so far long ago. of your godliness.
to exist. is all. Your peaceful moments of stillness and quietude are your existence fully expressed. And so you are drawn to that which stirs you as the wind stirs the earth and its dust. If the beliefs that you hold are too precious, they shall disintegrate from your system If you are holding on to your beliefs, if you are clinging to their validation, then you must go deeper. You must go further. For your existence was not a whim You have questions that are based upon where you find yourselves to be. You wish to know in greater detail or perhaps there are truths that you wish to know that you must feel the confirmation of the fruitfulness of your future as a species. It is because peace is what you are. There are two experiences of peace within you. For those who depart your physical world, you say, rest in peace. That when all is said and done, then you shall have peace. You wish to not make your lives a struggle. And so you suspect that there is a power to the mind, as you call it. But you have collapsed mind with brain. And so when you attempt to perform mind over matter, You are focused very intently upon that which is within your skulls. And this is a containment. And that focus becomes too intense. And the vibration of what you are then begins to feel constrained or off balance. It is important that you listen very slowly. You know how to speak very slowly, but to listen very slowly is where you are creating time.
the practice of listening slowly. perhaps can be more smoothly understood by the process of tasting that which is within your mouths when you are eating. There is a savoring and an allowing of the information that is encoded in the foods that you eat to be received by the receptors of your physical senses. You are time creators. The power of your intention and your focus can have immediate effects upon the physical body. You are applying as a species the principles of propulsion that can no longer serve you your vehicles are using a form of combustion that the idea of an explosion to move a vehicle forward using the fuels that you have developed to push your vehicles forward upon which you discover the great difficulty of steering them along with the forces that are created within the vehicle itself, the degradation of materials and the pollution of your environment. This technology reflects the way you see the movement of life and yourself, that you must burn energy that you must struggle to control momentum that you have difficulty turning left or right Your brethren who have advanced technologically from you do not use this understanding of movement forward. The vehicles that they have developed for the traveling that you wish to do travel within their own environment that are created around their vehicles through the understanding of frequency. You are able to understand this in personal terms that you travel through your lives more easily when you retain your own truth that is your own frequency your own truth, meaning the peace that you have settled into within yourself to be and feel free. As you have surrendered to this, the movement through your life shall not pollute your own environment, nor others, and nor shall you burn yourselves out your vehicles will evolve. Your technology represents the way that you perceive reality. Your technology is an extension of some of the rudimentary 
functions of the human. As you recognize and acknowledge that you are consciousness that is eternal and ever green, the advancements that you dream of to prolong your lives and live more physically well shall appear are you a primitive world there are planetary systems that are experiencing currently a similar history to yours from thousands of years ago and some from hundreds of thousands of your years ago. Simply put, there are other civilizations who have not yet invented the wheel. They are not less than you, as you are not less than us. You may begin your questions. It is in your nature to protect you have seen tribal warfare you have seen warfare within families within friendships, within all the purpose of physical existence is the expression of the being you are that which is Therefore, you are being. In this reality, you are a human being, or you are being human. But the human is not what you are. It is the being that you are. The violence that you experience is because at the foundation of these beliefs there is a disbelief that you are beings and a firm belief that you are humans. You say you are human beings simply being human and that the destructive aspect, which is a protective aspect, the evolution of humanity to no longer take the physical life of another is imminent, but you seek for this to happen within a reasonable period of time by your terms. Evolution, to use the word that is used here, is the progression of moments which you refer to as time. You care for the evolution of humans to not kill one another.
in what is a reasonable amount of time. If we were to tell you in 10,000 of your years you shall achieve this state, a part of you will say, at what cost? Another will say, at least there is an end. And another shall say, that is too far away. And perhaps another shall say, in the scope of evolutionary terms, in time, 10,000 years is a blink of an eye. Perhaps it is wise to understand that you are focused in this reality. This is challenging for you, for you feel that this reality that you are experiencing on some level is not real. And so you wish to know what is real. The dimensions that you experience in the dreamscape of your sleep state is indeed felt and experienced by you as real in that moment. You have experienced death in your dream state and some of you have experienced birth. You have experienced in your dream state your lives being taken or you have taken the life of another. What if you were to stay in that dream state and never to awaken in the physical body? What would then occur is that timeline would continue. It would have more energy and more potency to become more and more real in terms you understand as real. That reality would become so authentic to you that this reality would now become the dream and that reality would then become reality as three-dimensional. Is this possible? It is, and it is called death. Your question. eternal beings, it seems like there is no real pressure to do anything. Why is it that we seem to experience critical windows of opportunity that determine grave outcomes for our species? Does it really matter what timeline humanity enters? As has been discussed, the nature of time is perceived by your vibrational state. When you are in pain, the nature of time moves very slowly. And in accordance with that truth, you shall experience time differently in states of joy. Your emotional frequency, your emotional vibration is created by what you believe to be good or not good. If it is not good, time will then be dragging. If you decide it is good, it shall move more quickly. Where is the freedom from this? It would be 
the consistent effort by you to remove the feelings of right and wrong of what you are experiencing. Consider yourself experiencers, not victims. If there is something that you feel that has victimized you, that you have been a victim of in your past or your present, what would serve you more powerfully is to see yourself as the experiencer of that rather than the victim of that. As an experiencer, you retain the validity of your eternalness. As a victim, you deny it. As an experiencer of trauma, you remain in your freedom to understand your creations. You will not deny your emotional reactions for they are, as you see the word, divine. The nature of your question is understood. All efforts are made by you consciously to understand. But you are learning new languages within yourself. For you are learning to read between lines and to expand the meaning of things as your question ponders whether or not existence has meaning. If you were to be told that your existence does not have a meaning nor a purpose, that the point is for you to give it one and that your word in a sense is God for you are creators the canvas is blank Therefore, one might say the canvas is meaningless, or is that not true? The canvas's meaning, even though it is blank, is the potentiality of what can be created upon it. And so the canvas would not be regarded as meaningless. Would it? Your questions? Is there many motherships above us cloaked right now? Yes. Your terminology of many is relative to your experience of what you refer to quantity. There are physical ships in your physical dimension. There are those who are entering and exiting various portals on the planet. Would you like some explanations of these portals? Yes. The portals existed before your planet. All was created around them. 
creation was done from the inside out. Not formed by some great hands putting soil and rock together. We are inclined and open to tell you of the creation of the planet, if you are interested. Your planet is a community effort. These are terms that you can understand. With grace, we tell you this, that what we are meaning by terms you can understand is in no way to demean your intelligence. To explain to you a color that you have never seen would be impossible if it has no relation to any color you have seen. Do you understand? Think on it. Your physical capacity of your eyesight can only see that which is within the spectrum of color that it can receive as reflected light. There are other colors that exist. But it is not in agreement with this dimension that you are in for you to labor to imagine it. And it is not necessary. You are doing quite well with the colors that you do see. You are not native to the earth, none of you, and none of your ancestors. Your brethren of races and species that exist not only in this dimension that you perceive with your full focused attention but the dimensions that are on finer, more subtle frequencies that various parts of your consciousness do, feel, accept, and communicate with. Your planet is in a location that is isolated from much more advanced civilizations technologically and psychologically for they are at peace. The planets in your solar system that are currently in existence, some are containing life, intelligent life. These life forms exist on a frequency that your physical eyes nor your technological devices can perceive. In these interdimensional realities, there are planets, as you call them, that exist if they were to be seen by your naked eye you would be able to see them from your earth there are some on your planet who are aware of this truth 
and that is because some races have communicated with them here. The purpose of creating the physical earth was for those who wish to experience the projection of life which you consider to be called incarnation. As a location for an experiment of coexistence. In some sense of the word, you all are more cousins than brothers. The racial barriers, conflicts, extend in some instances to an ancient dispute. That dispute simply based upon locations, meaning there are species who live on certain planets and some who are dispersed throughout a physical universe. The development of language on your planet comes from a small number of languages that are derived from overarching languages spoken on other planets. It is why your languages are so distinctly different from one another. It is why there are genetic differences between you. It is why some perhaps shall never get along. Earth was seen as an experiment. Those souls, as you refer to yourselves, choose to incarnate here. It is why the population is more now than it was before. There are what you might call Aliens, the word we choose humorously to reflect the aliens from other countries that you call aliens. And so there is more immigration to this planet from other star systems. They are not arriving in ships. They are consciously projecting themselves to be incarnated. Those families, also in agreement, descend from their larger families. Earth, relatively speaking, is a small planet and was chosen and created. Your moon also placed to ensure the movement of certain natural forces, such as your oceans. The stories of creation that are in your religious scriptures there are truths that if one were to read carefully do not point to the planet Earth but the larger world, interdimensional and interplanetary. There is a reason why you wonder and your ancestors wondered as they gazed into the night sky as to what is out there and 
sensed a longing. There is a reason why. It is not because you are lonely souls or consciousness. It is because you know. that there is connection. You know it so well that from sand and rock and plants you created machines to travel beyond your earth. Is that not what your ships are made from? The metals that you derived from the rock that you have extracted and turned into steel. And the materials that you created to create your ships to travel to your moon and around your planet. It was not very long ago that your physical ancestors, what you refer to as the cave people, the cave men, walked the ground and held the rocks and the plants in their hands and gazed up at the heavens. And the intent of your ancestors as they grasped the sand and rock and plants as they gazed upon the heavens was that they shall use that and somehow find a way to travel up there. And within a relatively short period of time, you did. We have assisted you. For you have chosen again and again to be here in the understanding and exploration of reincarnation. There is a dimension that you return to then you return to and choose to be here. You sense a longing for home. If you only could be home. Then you resign yourselves to say I shall learn to enjoy being here until I return home. Your ancestors wishing to go home, your modern day religions wishing to go home. The mental process became that if you only do good things as you call them good, you shall then deserve to go to a very pleasant home. And such ideas of heaven and hell began. The purpose became those who wish to explore come here. If you find it to be disappointing that the physical earth was created by beings rather than your belief in the source that created it. If that is disappointing to you, You are only choosing one creation story over one other. There is a larger 
story. The earth was created physically as if you would create a miniature garden using raw materials and implementing technology that you will discover on creating, regenerating independent life. You are in your earthly terms far from that for you are fearing even the technology of artificial intelligence You are not on a prison planet. You are the experiencer of a dimension where you are using contrast to define your realities and your emotions the number of civilizations would be considered infinite to you that exist this is not a testament to meaninglessness of your existence. Progressing beyond the initial shock of this information for you to consider, you will then surrender to a cosmic oneness with the civilization's that await your freedom. These civilizations transmit thought to you. You advance using the nutrients of this information, meaning that when this information is transmitted to you, telepathically you by your own free will and intelligence use those resources that information that comes as inspiration to you to create and that is the nature of our interaction it is not one of interference if you are experimenting with creation then you will experience that which you refer to as destruction as well. Your question. How does our blood type play into our history and future? In physical terms, we shall answer this question. For in this discussion, the spiritual reality, which is the essence of your creations, must be put aside to navigate the physical reality as you are affected by it and its importance on your life experience. Simply put, we will answer the question as you wish it to be answered. You 
posed the question about the type of blood. If you would care to be more specific, we are happy to answer. If one were to discuss blood, one must enter into the equation the understanding of DNA. Mm -hmm. For the blood is the carrier. If one were to say the differences in blood type in common terminology The blood is the vehicle, and you have many vehicles upon your planet. Some of those vehicles can carry more people than the other, correct? Consider the people to be information. Some of these vehicles run on different grades of fuel, but they are vehicles nonetheless. There are advantages to larger vehicles, for there is a certain type of physical strength and resistance to accidents. Yes? There is an advantage to smaller vehicles who perhaps can fit into spaces that are more adaptable, less pollutive to the environment, and perhaps quicker in navigation. And so your blood type and the blood is the vehicle there are certain types of blood and we understand your inference to the type of blood where there is remnants, as you call them, of DNA to off-planet life. Is this your intention of the question? Indeed. The confirmation of your question is secured you must understand that your physical structure, your DNA, is but one timeline that overarching tribal connection to the star system that is separate from this star system from which your physical ancestors there are physical objects that have not appeared on the planet yet, for they have not been placed there by those who are from the future. That is why there is no evidence for certain things that are regarded as mythology on the planet. When it is time, those objects and physical evidence shall appear. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. By the same token, the DNA differences and those types of blood that are for the most part unexplainable are remnants of that physical link with your intergalactic family. You have questions about the reptilian brain. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yes. What are your
what is your question? It's not specific, but we were interested when you posed the question to elaborate further on what it is. We will take a moment to classify those beings that have interacted most predominantly with Earth. At the top of this list is what you refer to as the reptilian race. You are genetically linked to them. The nature is aggressive. Their focus creatively is different than other species. In the creation of the earth, they played a role. Earth began to sprout resources that were of great appeal to certain civilizations. At the top of this list was and is gold. You accept that gold is coveted, but you do not know why, for it has no intrinsic or practical value except for one. It is a very good conductor, as you are aware of here, sir. Its conductive properties to certain species is very valuable. At a certain time in Earth's history, an aggressive effort was made by these beings to mine this resource. Those who presided over these campaigns were very physically powerful and began to be depicted as gods. This was predominantly experienced by those in the area of what you refer to as Mesoamerica currently. And in the continent of Africa. As we have stated, all experiences are agreed upon by all parties on various levels. Your physical ancestors began to adorn themselves with gold, for it is a conductive property that, under certain sets of circumstances, can amplify life force energy. If not used properly, it can detract from life force energy. Your bodies are sensitive to the minerals and crystals that are held close to the body. In simpler terms, in the nourishment of the body, in the food that you eat, you require minerals as well. Even the consumption of certain types of gold can benefit the body, as you have discovered this with silver. In that period of time, where this race of reptilians, and it was a faction of them, not all of them. There are some who are also aggressive of their kind, who do not wish to partake in the Earth's resources. But those who did created 
a part of your history that is still experienced. Much of the gold was mined and taken. There is an abundance of it. Yes, they are still interacting with you. It is no longer for gold. Within the time that many of them were here in the campaign for gold, the planet that they regarded as their home was besieged by an enemy who used a certain type of biological warfare so that they would perish without violence. This was not done out of any mercy, but simply to better utilize their own resources and preserve their own forces. They used this biological warfare upon that particular strain of reptilians during the time that they presided over these campaigns for gold on the planet, they interbred with many of you. Hence some blood type differences and what you refer to as the reptilian brain that you are familiar with, yes? We may continue if there are further questions in this regard. Not in this regard, but another question about crystal and indigo children. Are all the crystal and indigo children all neurodivergent and what can we do to support them in the awakening? The terminology that you use as neurodivergent to classify are understood by us for there is a necessity and lack for better verbiage currently. Neuro referring to the processes of the brain. Divergent meaning different. It is a rudimentary term but it can serve us for the discussion what is the specific question? <clears throat> How can we support them in the, the awakening? That is temporary. They are here to support you. They are exactly as they should be in their part. As consciousness, they have chosen to come in full awareness and knowledge of the welcome or lack of it that they would experience. Those who choose to come in any form of capability, ability or disability as you see it, do so in full consciousness. In simpler terms, you choose to celebrate your holidays in certain dress, with certain terminology, with certain songs to sing, certain foods to eat, and certain moods, each holiday holding another mood for you. 
in more complex terms, but with a similar foundational premise, you choose lifetimes. They each have their own texture, characteristic, and intricate design. The study of music and its modes, whether it is Western, as you see Western, or Eastern, as you see Eastern, there are modes in music that are using certain frequencies in certain orders where other notes are not used and these become modes by using certain notes and not others certain frequencies are not others you create an evocative feeling when compositions are created in those modes there is a mood in the mode your compositions that are created in what you refer to as a major key and those that are created in what you refer to as a minor key evoke different feelings that resonate with the sympathetic strings that are within you. Frequency, resonance, these are principles that are important for you to implement in your understanding of all experiences question yes what are you is your group from the planetary system material planetary system or are you in the non-physical as consciousness the experience of simultaneous physical existence is possible you are touching upon it even in this existence as this shall evolve you shall experience simultaneous physical realities when you are entering into the sleep state but not quite fully in it. You are in two places at once, are you not? If one were to expand this, multiply this experience tenfold, one hundredfold or more, you would be experiencing multi-dimensional reality far more consciously simultaneously than you do now here in this experience of what you refer to as third dimension density you have moments of deja vu you have recognitions consciously of perhaps knowing another person from a past life and you have connections you make in the dream time yet none of these are as concrete as you would like them to be as you are in your state of evolution you shall achieve a state of multi-dimensional simultaneously perceived and experienced reality the planetary systems that we enjoy are consciously created and remembered by we and as that is what you refer to as overarching we are experiencing the freedom from physical existence and that is not in an emotional term 
to be free from emotional experiences, it is that it is. That is what is referred to as all that is, which is you. Simply put, we can exist physically on a planet or several while retaining the integrity of non-physical existence. Are you, is your group projecting yourselves as us? The oneness is of in emotional reality. The physical separation is a reality. They do not contradict the other. You are you, and we are we, and yet we are all you, and you all are us. This is not poetic. It is meant in literal terms as you see them and understand them. Will we ever, as a consciousness, get to a greater understanding of what creator slash God slash intelligent life form that was the beginning of all things. Is there such a thing as getting to that understanding? Yes. And that is when you shall be open to contact with the larger circle of civilization in your physical universe. It is our highest wish for you to achieve this in your agreed upon timeline as quickly as possible. The urgency is not one based upon fear of death or annihilation of your species, self-destructing. This urgency is one of great vitality, resonance, and the glorious nature of your creaturehood, which is the great love and desire that you are not what you feel, but what you are. What we are is unidentified until defined, correct? And defined by us. Or do we have to stay in the limitations of being a species? Self-reflection in this manner will be suffering from a circular logic. And that is the beginning and end conundrum that you are endlessly entertaining yourselves with, which is ironically decreasing your potency rather than if you were to find an answer for this, you believe it would increase your potency. The searching for it is decreasing your potency and keeping you from living in the full expression of your vibration. It is understood that it is your nature to question.
That is the nature of a creator. But you have also agreed in this focus, and this is where your further conflict lies, is that you see this as the totality of all reality. And it is very difficult for you to achieve a sustained experience of a larger reality. Is it not? And so with this feeling, you are not far from the feeling of feeling trapped, which will always eat at you. And so freedom becomes the nature of your search, and yet freedom is what you are. And that is why we say that it becomes circular in its illogic. If you were to see a circle in its perfection, you would simply say there is no beginning nor end, is there? And it would be done. But to insist that there must be, as you stare at the circle, searching for where the point of the line began, would border on a maddening feeling, as many of you can attest to. And so you search for the glory of your being, which you find in creation, whether it is the creation of an idea in physical form, or it is the birthing of a child. These are where you are experiencing value, which brings us to the word current and currency in electrical current current in the ocean, the currency of your words, your actions, the currency of your fiscal society and your financial lifeblood. Are there questions here? system collapses, what other currencies besides crypto can we look for, look to for financial security, growth, and abundance? As you are experiencing physical reality on earth, you began as a society to value the resources of the earth, and that was your financial currency whether it was when you were predominantly an agrarian society using the fruits of the earth, and the resources of the earth as currency, then the standard of gold and silver, the minerals of the earth becoming your currency. As you are evolving into understanding more of metaphysical reality. Your financial world will also experience this. Your current system of currency is not based upon the gold standard, is it? 
it is now in the binary code of digital formatting. Your currency is not based upon physical resources. In a sense, it is based more upon the metaphysical idea of energy without needing paper nor plastic nor the exchange of minerals or diamonds or gold or silver. Now it is simply the point value that is ascribed through the use of your computers where this currency would be stored. You see, currency is an agreement, is it not? The value that you place upon something in the assumption or the agreement or disagreement of what energy was spent to make it. The basis of your system of supply and demand, availability or rarity, giving the value to something. If it is in abundance, it is not rare, therefore not as valuable. If it is more difficult to extract and to refine, then the value shall be more. You also value human life this way. What is the question regarding currency? Is there a new crystalline form of currency that we should be looking for as our current financial structures collapse besides Bitcoin? Is there another form of digital crystalline based currency that is being developed? There are several. What is in The minds of those who influence these areas of your world are to create a one world currency. This is the long term goal. The implications will be social and political. It shall affect all. For what comes with one world currency will be somewhat akin to one world rule. Many safeguards would have to be put in place. The homogenization process in any area tends to denature the lifeblood of something, do you understand? Yes. As you homogenize milk. There is a denaturing that happens. The process is for the world to understand something that is connected to an earlier question regarding the meaning of existence, that value is placed upon existence or currency, simply put value placed upon energy expended, or the difficulty in the ability to create something creates value. Do you understand? Yes. This understanding will not change. And you are attuned and correct in the questioning of what form shall it take. As this moves forward, there will be quite a bit of time before you are able to achieve a one world currency that shall not have a physical characteristic. It is not difficult to surmise or to calculate that you shall no longer need your credit cards 
indeed they are working, so that you may use the print of your finger to pay for your goods or services. This may seem frightening for you. Does it? Sometimes. In what way? You just can be traced. Your activities can be traced, which I guess they can now already with a credit card. At which point then you shall all decide if there is a line you do not wish to cross. You have decided it in other areas. You have decided that physical violence or murder is a line that you shall not cross. And you have not changed your opinion on this in many, many, many thousands of years. So do not lose your understanding that humans who are being shall not simply give away everything. But if you regard it as a fight, that is unnecessary. For the souls who choose to come in the future as you see it are choosing to come to that environment for they are coming with new ideas of their own and the capacity to withstand and create within the new environment. Any further question? We are pleased and you are and we are blessed beyond measure. Perhaps it would please you to know that the source is revered still across physical universes. That has not changed. Be well. Their heads are totally round. <laughs> Their heads are totally round? <laughs> like a circle. Round and purple? Like a circle. Mm. So interesting. It was like a circle and um, almost like two necks on the body. Like there was a space in between the way their neck developed, the way they showed it to me. But it was so elegant, like beautifully designed, amazing.